In the city of Dwarves lives a famous detective named Jake Fletcher. With his keen sense of observation, he solves any crime which is committed in the city. One day, Central Bank in the city was robbed. Jake was called to investigate the crime scene. Press enter to start investigating the crime scene. Click an item if you feel it's an evidence. Finding an evidence will fetch you the mission. Less than or equal to sign will be used. No, we'll use less than sign. I bet my nuts. <sighs> Those two. Always at each other. Yeah, like sworn enemies. Hey! Whoa! You two are herbivores, right? Chill! He's scared. What's the matter? We were playing Detective Fletcher. Detective? What? It's a game where we solve missions by making programs which take decisions. Then why are you guys fighting? Our conditions in the last missions did not match. And she's wrong! No way! Abby, why don't you tell him he's wrong? Why not let Theo decide? Me? Yeah. After all, you can form conditions. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I can. I will. Bring it on. Sure. The game is to solve a case. For solving the case, you have to complete three missions. Understood. To complete the missions, you make conditions in the form of programs. Conditions I can make. But programs for conditions? Start! I will help! Alright! In the city of Dwarves lives a famous detective named Jake Fletcher. With his keen sense of observation, he solves any crime which is committed in the city. One day, Central Bank in the city was robbed. Jake was called to investigate the crime scene. Press enter to start investigating the crime scene. Click an item if you feel it's an evidence. Finding an evidence will fetch you the mission. Alright. A fruit seed. Huh. Maybe the robber brought it. In the city of Dwarves, there are only two orchards. Vertu de Ben and Peter's Verger. They both have different fruits growing in them. Since both orchards have different fruits, a seed of custard apple will exist only in one of them. Right. If the fruit is in the first orchard, then it's the first orchard. Else, it's from the second orchard. But how do I make a program for this condition? Before I answer, tell me this. How can you tell if a number is even or odd? After dividing the number by 2, if the remainder is 0, then it is even. And if the remainder is 1, then it is odd. Correct! You said if remainder is 0, then it's even. Yeah, I did. Now, look how a program is made for this condition. Hey, we use this function to take inputs and then store it in a variable as a number. Correct. Next line now. All right. Now, we divide the number by 2 to see if the remainder is 0 using modulus. Good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, mm. does Mr. Python understand what the word if means? Yep, he does just like he understands else. Mr. Python has this exciting feature. We call it an if-else program. Oh yes, we use it to give logics in the form of programs. Whoa, we can make programs which can take decisions. That's cool. 
So how does this program work? Next to the if word, we write the condition. If it's true, then Mr. Python moves to the next line. And then Mr. Python just executes it. It was obvious. But when... I know! When condition is false, Mr. Python executes what's written under else. My boy! Let's check for five. Amazing! It works the way we wanted. Hmm. Let me try with an even number this time. Else, it'll bug me for the rest of the day. Never forget the colons after the condition and the word else. Okay, let me remove these useless spaces. No! no! Mr. Python gives an error if those spaces are missing. Sorry, are those spaces important? Most important. We call them indentation. It helps Mr. Python to separate the instructions of if and else. Yup, we call them block. Aha, got it. It helps Mr. Python to avoid confusion. Now let's solve the case. Oh, I need to write the program for the conditions. Here, the code. Perfect. What programs did you both write? Well, Hey, similar to mine. See this. Not at all like mine. Is this condition even correct? Yes, it is. But how? Let's draw a flowchart to clear your doubt. Flowchart? What's that? Let's make one for the odd even program to know it. All right, let's start. Remember, always start with an oval box. The condition goes inside this diamond shape. Then, we make another arrow and name it true. This box includes the instruction which gets executed when the condition is true. We make another arrow for... For false! Correct! I'm guessing it holds the instruction which gets executed when the condition is false. Correct! And the flowchart ends! Yup, we covered the whole program. Let's make a small change for a twist. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That will give the opposite output. When the condition is met, the number is odd. And if the condition is not met, the number is even. Perfect! Now, Tyra did something similar. Yeah. I've considered Orchard 2 in my condition and Zoe considered Orchard 1. That's why my programs are different. You're right. Guys, back to the game. Press enter to start investigating the orchard. A shoe print? Hmm. The shoe marks has a special chemical in them, produced in a moist area. There are only two factories along the Mile River's bank, Fabric von Friedrich and Alexis Production. Two factories where this chemical is. Huh? The culprit can be working in one of them. Okay, let's start. If the chemical in factory 1 matches the chemical found, then culprit works there. Otherwise, the culprit works in the second fact. Correct! And yours? Same, bud. This time, mine too. Final mission now. Another shoe print? Judging by the height of the footmark on the tree, Jake Fletcher estimated that the culprit is 4 feet 9 inches to 5 feet 2 inches tall. In the city of dwarves, such a height is unusual. Can I make a program without using else? Definitely. 
All right, the height should be greater than or equal to 4.9 and should be less than or equal to 5.2. Done! Nice! Yours, Tyra? Here! Same! But mine is... You missed the equal to signs. That's what? But there shouldn't be any. What if the culprit is 5.2 or 4.9 feet long? Will your code catch him? Fine. You'll see next time, Tyra. We'll see. <laughs>